Hey everyone, it's Saoirse, and today I have my mole mug and my little tiny Edgar the Mole because we are going to talk about a wonderful book, The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. This was published in 1908 and it really just contains absolutely everything that I love. It's the perfect book for me, and I can't believe I never read it when I was a kid. I don't think I ever saw any of the adaptations of it, was not really familiar with the story, um, and I'm so happy that I finally read it, because this is a book of anthropomorphized animals living in Edwardian England, living a very pastoral, beautiful life. <laughs> it's just lovely. So. It's, it's got all the obvious draws for me, and then moles, of course. As soon as I knew that there was a mole that featured heavily, hello my son, I was very excited. And you can see all these fun little creatures on the cover. This is a very pretty edition that is from Barnes & Noble. And this quote on the back was very intriguing to me. Messing about in boats. I was excited to find out what that was all about. So, this is the story of Mole, and Rat, and Badger, and Toad. We'll talk about Toad. Um, but just first off, this writing is sublime. It is so stunning. There are descriptions in here that are unlike anything I have read when it comes to nature writing, which is pretty much... I don't know, I'd kind of classify it that way. It's like children's nature writing. And children's, it's, it's difficult to call it that today because I think it's pretty advanced in terms of today's, hello, today's standards for children's writing. But you know, The Hobbit was a children's book. So back in the day, books were a little bit more difficult. I think we expected more of children. So, <clears throat> this is, um, Sorry, I'm too excited. This starts with Mole deciding that he wants to quit spring cleaning and he discovers this whole world of above ground life and it's so joyful and he meets Rat and they go on all these wild adventures. <sighs> okay, so let's take a look at some of the, some of the things in here that I really liked. Um, this one might be the best part in the book in terms of just beautiful writing. He's describing a river. He thought his happiness was complete when, as he meandered aimlessly along, suddenly he stood by the edge of a full-fed river. Never in his life had he seen a river before, this sleek, sinuous, full-bodied animal, chasing and chuckling, gripping things with a gurgle and leaving them with a laugh to fling itself on fresh playmates that shook themselves free and were caught and held again. All was a shake and a shiver, glints and gleams and sparkles, rustle and swirl, chatter and bubble. The mole was bewitched, entranced, fascinated. By the side of the river he trotted as one trots when very small, by the side of a man who holds one spellbound by exciting stories. And when tired at last, he sat on the bank, while the river still chattered on to him, a babbling procession of the best stories in the world, sent from the heart of the earth, to be told at last, to the insatiable sea. <sighs> that, I was just like, are you kidding me? And that's right at the beginning of the book. Page three. And he's like, let me tell you about this river. You're gonna lose your mind. And I lost my mind. Um, just... Who would think to write about a river that way? The insatiable sea, oh, just stunning, absolutely stunning. Okay, we meet Toad, and I have some things to say about Toad. Toad is me, I am Toad. I'm all of these characters, but Toad is the one that I don't want to be, and um, I felt personally attacked. So they're talking about how he's always picking up new hobbies. Once it was nothing but sailing, said the rat. Then he tired of that and took to punting. Nothing would please him but to punt all day and every day, and a nice mess he made of it. Last year it was houseboating, and we all had to go and stay with him in his houseboat and pretend we liked it. He was going to spend the rest of his life in a houseboat. It's all the same. Whatever he takes up, he gets tired of it and starts on something fresh. 
Yep, sounds about right. I really feel for Toad. I really feel for him because he just, I think, I think he's got anxiety and depression and he's lonely and he's looking for the thing that's going to fill his days and um, give him a purpose and I just, I definitely do the same thing where I'm like, this is it. This is my thing now. This is going to be me forever. And then I never, I never stick to anything. Because the thing is, like, to get really good at, to get good at anything, you have to put in so much practice and I can't dedicate myself to one thing because I'm interested in too many things. So I just feel for Toad. This part is just hilarious. Oh, your claws got me. I know. The rat hummed a tune and the mole recollected that animal etiquette forbade any sort of comment on the sudden disappearance of one's friends at any moment for any reason or no reason whatsoever. Whatever. Um, just these hilarious animal rules that he sprinkles through here. Um, there's no reason for them and they're just funny. Everything is so beautifully realized in here, like this world is just so real, it's so well thought out. The only thing that I was confused about was when they start having interactions with people, like seemingly real people, not animals, and I was just thinking, who's the wrong size here? Like are the animals people sized or are the people animal sized? Because why are they, why are humans able to like talk to a toad and think that Toad is a human, like Toad tricked people into thinking he was a washerwoman. So is he human sized? Cause that's, how does that even work? I'm, I'm so confused about that. Still don't know. It doesn't matter though. Okay, there's some beautiful descriptions of just very cozy scenes in here. <clears throat> the kindly badger thrusts them down on a settle to toast themselves at the fire and bade them remove their wet coats and boots. Then he fetched them dressing gowns and slippers, and himself bathed the mole's shin with warm water and mended the cut with sticking plaster till the whole thing was just as good as new, if not better. In the embracing light and warmth, warm and dry at last, with weary legs propped up in front of them, and a suggestive clink of plates being arranged on the table behind, it seemed to the storm-driven animals, now in safe anchorage, that the cold and trackless wild wood just left outside was miles and miles away, and all that they had suffered in it, a half-forgotten dream. Oh, it's just so cozy, and we even have cozy illustrations. Like, there were, there were some descriptions where I just felt, felt warmer, I felt like a bunch of moles were hugging me, you know? Okay, something I wrote haha in my notes, so something is funny here, oh yeah. When supper was really finished at last, and each animal felt that his skin was now as tight as was decently safe, and that by this time he didn't care a hang for anybody or anything, they gathered round the glowing embers of the great wood fire, and thought how jolly it was to be sitting up so late and so independent and so full. And after they had chatted for a, a time about things in general, the badger said heartily, Now then, tell us the news from your part of the world. How is old Toad going on? Each animal felt that his skin was now as tight as was decently safe. What a delightful way to say that they had eaten a lot of food. It's just precious. It's absolutely precious. I can picture everything perfectly. I wish I was these creatures. I want them to invite me into their lovely homes and we can have a fire and eat so much food and there's like no responsibilities. It's just such a happy little world. Except for some of the weird things that happen, like Toad going to prison, and um, yeah, no, we'll get to the, the really bizarre thing that happens later. Uh, and there's this part here where they talk about Badger being busy, um, and it says, the fact is, as already set forth, when you live a life of intense activity for six months in the year, and of comparative or actual somnolence for the other six, during the latter period you cannot be continually pleading sleepiness when there are people about or things to be done. The excuse gets monotonous. The animals well knew that Badger, having eaten a hearty breakfast, had retired to his study and settled himself in an armchair with his legs up on another, and a red cotton handkerchief over his face, 
and was being busy in the usual way at this time of the year. That's just my kind of busy. I really relate. And sometimes, I mean, it's literally for your mental health. You've got to just, you, you say you're busy and your version of busy means I can't be doing things. Like, please don't expect things of me right now. I am busy just taking care of myself. Um, it's a little different if you're actually a badger and he's, he like actually has to rest. Um, for badger reasons, but whatever. It's just a lot of this stuff is relatable and that's... I think that's often done with stories um, about animals, humanized animals. Oh, I keep kicking things. Sorry, I'm filming at night and I didn't want to. I just put this off all day and now I can barely see my notes because it's the light is not great. Um, lovely. What did I say was lovely? Oh yes, there's this bit about mole. And it's just so cute because he's so adventurous and he wants to experience new things. But after going to the wild wood, he's like, hold up. I know, I know what kind of mole I am now. Mole saw clearly that he was an animal of tilled field and hedgerow, linked to the plowed furrow, the frequented, frequented pasture, the lane of evening lingerings, the cultivated garden plot. For others, the asperities, the stubborn endurance, or the clash of actual conflict that went with nature in the rough. He must be wise, must keep to the pleasant places in which his lines were laid, and which held adventure enough in their way to last for a lifetime. So much of this writing just feels like delicious to read, and some of it I read out loud. Um, I read this with my cats on my lap. My cat is currently on my lap and you can't see him, but he's being a good boy. So yeah, it just felt, I don't know, the language is so poetic. I mean, I, maybe that's obvious, but it's just so beautifully written and structured, and this this line where it says, his lines were laid, I think of Mole's tunnels, um, and how he's like being called back by his mole tunnels. It's just stunning. I really can't believe I never read this. Let's see. Oh, this part where Mole finds his home, this kills me. Like, he, he is running along and smells a familiar smell, and he had left his home months ago, and he's just been hanging out with Rat and boating and getting into all kinds of wild stuff, but we know moles, you know, real moles, they don't come out from underground very much. They don't want to. Um, so he's just suddenly reminded, oh yeah, there's this whole home and life that I built that I've just left. Um, and it's really, like, heartbreaking. Um, and he, when he brings Rat in there, he's, like, apologizing for not having certain things and things being dusty and whatever, and it really just, like, hurt. It hurt me. I felt so bad for him. But then Rat makes him feel a lot better about it in this part here. Oh. While the rat busied himself fetching plates and knives and forks and mustard, which he mixed in an egg cup, the mole, his bosom still heaving with the stress of his recent emotion, related somewhat shyly at first, but with more freedom as he warmed to his subject, how this was planned and how that was thought out and how this was got through a windfall from an aunt, and that was a wonderful find and a bargain, and this other thing was bought out of laborious savings and a certain amount of going without. His spirits finally quite restored, he must needs go and caress his possessions and take a lamp and show off their points to his visitor and expatiate on them and quite forgetful of the supper they both so much needed. Um, Rat, who was desperately hungry, but strove to conceal it, nodding seriously, examining with a puckered brow and saying, wonderful and most remarkable at intervals when the chance for an observation was given him. It's just so like, oh, it really gets to me. He just wants to, he finally sees his things again. He wants to show Rat all of them. And, I don't know, I just relate to him. You know, I spend so much time curating everything in my house and don't really see people very much. Um, people are busy and there's, you know, the whole pandemic and not a lot of people come over. So, if somebody does and they're interested in, like, my 
cat figurine collection or my books or any number of strange Victorian objects around my house. So I'm like, oh, let me tell you about this because it means a lot to me. And just the idea of like leaving it and forgetting about it, that would make me so sad. I feel you, Mole. And then he has the little, the little Christmas carolers come by. Oh. There's just this great analogy here when Rat is staying at, at Mole's house. He clambered into his bunk and rolled himself well up in the blankets, and slumber gathered him forthwith as a swath of barley is folded into the arms of the reaping machine. Even the analogies are pastoral. Oh my goodness. I can't get enough of it. <laughs> okay, this this was just funny. There's just a line here. I'm gonna put a tab there. It says, Meanwhile, Toad, gay and irresponsible. And I was like, hey. Who wrote that line about me? Come on. Just so delightful. I think that's the word that just always comes to mind to think about this book. Delightful. I even wrote delightful in huge letters on my notes because that is the main vibe. Um, okay, this is another very cozy, oh, wonderful little passage. Toad is in prison and this girl gets him some food. The smell of that buttered toast simply talked to Toad, and with no uncertain voice. Talked of warm kitchens, of breakfasts on bright frosty mornings, of cozy parlor firesides on winter evenings, when one's ramble was over and slippered feet were propped on the fender, of the purring of contented cats and the twitter of sleepy canaries. Toad sat up on end once more, dried his eyes, sipped his tea, and munched his toast, and soon began talking freely about himself and so on and so forth. He loves talking about himself. I am not completely like Toad, okay? I'm not gonna steal a car and, you know, get myself sent to prison and all that. It's just the switching, switching hobbies thing that I really relate to. So that was just a beautiful passage. I love the talk of food in here, and I am very confused about, like, where they're getting this food. Where are they getting the food? Are they... Are they basically human? I don't... I don't know. Um, there's this great part here about, like, what stories are. The mole was a good listener, and Toad, with no one to check his statements or to criticize in an unfriendly spirit, rather let himself go. Indeed, much that he related belonged more properly to the category of what might have happened had I only thought of it in time instead of ten minutes afterwards. Those are always the best and the raciest adventures, and why should they not be truly ours, as much as the somewhat inadequate things that really come off? Doesn't that happen to you? you you're you telling a story and you've kind of forgotten, is this the way that it happened, or is this the way that, like, right afterwards I thought I should have done this? And so, I don't know, the memory becomes sort of changed? It's very interesting. So... The characters, the characters were just so wonderful, and I, I see them like this. Toad, he's a chaos addict, and I relate to that part of him. Mole, he is an adventurous homebody, which are two things that are kind of opposed, but he makes it work and he fashions a life for himself where you can have both things, and I relate to that too. I love being at home. And I absolutely love adventure. And then we have a rat who is a poetic, practical nature lover. He is just going with the flow, like literally with the flow of the river. He just wants to write little poems and songs and think about how wonderful everything is. And then there's Badger. He's the wise and kind introvert who might seem unfriendly at first because he's so introverted and so into his own you know, his own lifestyle. He doesn't like to have it disturbed, but he's a very loyal and good friend. So I just really, I really feel for all these characters. They just, I feel like they all make up, you know, some of my, oh, I just untied my shirt. Some of my values, though, you know, Toad is, 
Toad represents the things that are maybe I'm maybe I gotta work on a little bit, but he's got his good attributes as well, right? So then there's some pictures. Some of the pictures I just want to show you. Like this one. Is this mole or rat? Sometimes I'm very confused by the illustration, but I just like this one because it's so cozy. I just love the glow of the candlelight. Okay, then we have this super bizarre part where Mole and Rat find- they're looking for Otter's baby and they come across this like godlike figure. Who is this guy? It was- it, it felt like a Tom Bombadil moment. I was like, what is going on? Does this actually fit into the story? Um, will this figure, will this character figure later in the story? No, it was just a wacky moment. Um, really strange. And then we have this part. This part was kind of like a little, it just tugged at my heartstrings, where um, Rat meets this ship rat, this sea rat, who's always traveling on boats, and he goes into this weird, like, hypnosis where he has this desire to be a sea rat and to get on ships and travel and be a wayfarer, and then Mole's like, please calm down, please, um, come back to yourself. I just love it. It's delightful. All of the characters have these well, it's like they have these tiny arcs, you know, they each get their, they each get their moment where they kind of grapple with something that has been inside them, like for Mole, it's his, I got cut off there, I ran out of memory. So I was saying, um, the things that they have to grapple with for Mole, it's his home and how moles are typically, you know, they're underground creatures, they don't do a lot of adventuring, they're just trying to find food within their territory, and Mole, he has to find out what's important to him, and it's important to him that he keeps ties to his home while also being able to go off and enjoy this world that he's discovered. Um, Toad has to cope with his, uh, his tendencies, his, uh, chaotic streak, and I think at the end he Finally, he might be the last one to, to really grapple with his issues because he manages to not launch into some song and dance about how great he is when they have the party at Toad Hall, which is a big step for him. <clears throat> and then we have Badger. Oh, what does Badger do? Well, Badger has to kind of come out of his comfortable home and deal with the fact that his friend is absolutely going nuts and he helps him, and so I think he realizes what's important to him too, you know, he has to come out of his comfy lair because his friend's in some trouble. Um, rat, Rat has that whole moment with the ship rat where, you know, Rat's been kind of like the most steady character, he's just smooth sailing, like having a great time, enjoying picnics, but he's also got this sort of <clears throat> I don't know. This thing happens to him sometimes, like when he's talking to Mole and he's just not paying attention and he gets, he just gets kind of dreamy and far away and a little bit manic sometimes. And Mole is able to bring him back to himself. So I think they all just have like really wonderful, distinct character traits. And it's just, it's so well crafted, it's so well thought out. I'm gonna keep saying the same thing. So I definitely recommend it. I mean, read it on a beautiful summer afternoon. Well, if you don't, if you live somewhere where summer afternoons are nice. I live in Florida, so I read this during a winter afternoon and beautiful. Um, you know, get cozy with it. I wish that I had a fireplace. That would be nice. I just really enjoyed the experience of reading this book. So highly recommend. And that is all I will say about that. If you have um, any recommendations that are similar to this, did he write anything else? I didn't even look that up. 
Um, but this was so stunning. I, I feel like if I wrote something like that, I'd be like, that's it. That's all you get. <laughs> Enjoy it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I believe next time will be my 100th video, which is thrilling, and it's been almost three years since I started my channel. How time flies when you're reading a lot of books. So happy reading, and I will see you all next time.